Hello, welcome to this video. It's a quick review of the simulator Orca FPV Skydive, which is made by Orca, the company that make the goggles. Well, that's what they're most known for anyway. Before I get into the rest of the video though, if you like buttons, there's quite a lot on this page and you should try pressing the different ones and see what they do. So physics, um, I think the physics feel pretty good in general. Uh, maybe throttle is a little too responsive and you can change direction a little too quickly, but, and there's very little, very, very little prop wash. It makes it sort of not feel like a perfect sort of, not perfect, but you know, not a great simulation, but in general it feels really like sort of correct with the speed it falls at and like, um, you know, it just sort of, it flop, it's got weight to it, it's got heft, it's just, and you've got the, the ability to like momentum fling it the same way you would in real life, um, which some of the other ones don't really have that, you feel like you sort of lose uh, speed really quickly. Um, this, I would say, sort of feels a bit more like you can throw it around like you can with a, a real quad. One thing to point out is actually that there's no sliders for physics, so you can't control the weight, you can't control the thrust or anything like that. Um, just worth pointing that out, I think. Options then. Um, first of all, it's dead easy to set up your controller in this. I just plug in my Mambo, TBS Mambo is what I use the controller, plug that in and then launch the sim and it's picked it up and then you can calibrate it with like really quick center the sticks, push the throttle, do the select axis, etc. It's dead easy. If you plug it in um, through a whoop, like if you have another controller that can connect up to a whoop and you plug that in to control it. Um, I've got a video that shows you how to connect a whoop as a um, HID device so that you can pretend it's a gamepad. I'll card that out. But if you do that, it also works and it just picks it up the same way like a gamepad and you do the same calibration and it works. Um, provided obviously you've Whoop, bind, uh, whoop powers the receiver from the USB port, but most of them do, so you'll be fine with that. Notable absence is PID tuning, but honestly, I don't care. I'm never going to PID tune in a simulator. Um, they all feel fine from the default. Rates are pretty good. They match Beta Flight, Emi Flight pretty well. I feel like I find I put my rates in and it matches what I expect. The only thing where it doesn't is the throttle, and I think that's because it doesn't have like the midpoint and S curve sort of way of doing rates. It just has Expo. So you put Expo in and as far as I can tell it's either linear or it's putting a curve from the bottom to the top rather than a curve that goes sharply up to the midpoint and then sh swoops up to the full throttle. So it's like an S-curve. It doesn't do that as far as I can tell. Um, so if you like a sort of S-curved throttle you might have a little bit of a weird time. And that might also be why I think the physics feel a little, too, little strange with the throttle response because it's not matching my throttle response properly. So when it comes to maps, we've got three maps, and we've got a construction site, which is like cranes, uh, shells of buildings, and like there's a lot of things you can like shoot through and dive and like loop around. So that's, that's pretty nice. We've got a desert, which is um, like rocks and caves and stuff, and you can again shoot around that. There's a lot of sort of tunnels, and then it open space. There's a lot more open space than there is internal space, though. And then the third one, which is the most recently added is um which does show that they are developing this actively because it was added not that long ago is a uh, abandoned building and it's got like water towers and then like really tight space abandoned building like bando type environment and there's some s stuff that's really difficult to sort of get through and get around because the quad's so fast compared to the size of the environment which is similar to real life when you're using like a five inch in tight spaces so performance and looks wise, obviously you've seen enough footage of it now to make your own decision on how it looks, but performance wise, it's pretty good. It seems to get a, high, a decent enough frame rate that I've never gone, oh, this is choppy and lagging. And it loads really quick. Um, granted, the environments are quite small, but I've got really old hardware. I've got a GTX 970, a 10 year old CPU, like nothing crazy over here. And um, it just runs pretty flawlessly. And I'd have to see it running on something a lot worse, but I don't feel like people would struggle if you've got a PC from like the last five years, you'll probably be fine. In terms of additional features, there's not really much going on there. There's no map editor, no quad customization or anything like that. Um, these things just seem to be like not a priority. I will say that it's being actively developed, it seems like. You get updates reasonably frequently. Like I said, they added a map, they've added better calibration and stuff like that. And if you're in their Discord, it does seem like things are being worked on and talked about. It is quite active. So I don't think you can expect them to never be there, but they aren't there at the moment, those type of extra features. Okay, so to sum up, I think anyone who's a beginner should definitely just use this and don't bother buying another simulator until you're decent at flying, because 
you're going to save a lot of money rather than trying out the ones until one feels right or you like it. This one loads up quick. Yeah, it might not have a load of variety and it might not have the map size of something like DRL, but it also is free and it flies well and you're going to learn how to fly using it. So for beginners, definitely. And then even for experienced pilots, if you don't want to, you know, you don't need all that sort of crazy extra features to get the benefit of a simulator. And I end up flying this one more than any of the others anyway. So yeah, I think realistically everyone should just try it if they're even slightly interested because you're not paying for it. Yeah, I think that covers everything. Um, press some buttons. I don't know. There's quite a lot of them around. Just click a couple. There's probably some videos flashed up as well. You could click one of them. I don't know. They're probably all right. I didn't choose them. YouTube did. YouTube knows what you like better than I do.